Hello and welcome to another episode of How to Paint Star Wars Legion. Today we're looking at the limited edition Luke Skywalker. This is a fantastic miniature with a ton of great detail and just looks really special on the board. So let's get into it. So here's the box and uh, it's pretty standard. There's a few alternative poses, but I think I've already got my pose picked out. I want to handle a lightsaber glow and also all the details on his helmet. So I'm going to begin by snipping all the pieces out and then just gently scraping some of the excess away with a exacto knife. And because this is a hard plastic sprue, I'm going to be using plastic glue to assemble the miniature. And then once he's built, we're going to move on to priming. So I'm going to be using an airbrush for this, but you could use a spray can. And I'm starting off with just an all over black. I'm making sure to get underneath as well, and not too thick, because I don't want to obscure the detail. And then I'm taking a white, and I'm applying that from just above here. And what that does is it highlights all the details, but it also gives me a sketch of where the light would fall on his clothing. And once the priming's done, I'm going to give it some time to dry. And with this model, I'm going to set myself a challenge by not using any washes or any contrast paints. So to begin, we're using Evil Sun Scarlet, and I'm applying this as a base coat all over the jumpsuit. I'm taking a little extra time and making sure that I'm getting all of these areas of white so there's nothing showing where the belt meets the jumpsuit or anything like that. And if the paint goes on thin, I will make sure that I apply two coats. And as you can see, I'm not worried about any overspill just yet. And next for the face, I'm going to be using Bugman's Glow as a base coat here. And I'm just going all over the face, including the eyes and all the details. For the gloves, I'm going to be using Baneblade Brown. And I'm applying this in the same manner as I already have for the jumpsuit and the face. Just a nice thin base coat all over. I'm also using this as a base color for the helmet as well. I'm switching to Pro Acryl's Neutral Gray, and I'm using this for metallic areas, so for example the lightsaber hilt. And a Rhinox hide, which I'll be using on the belt here. I've decided to switch back to the neutral grey for all the straps and the chest piece and vest. The idea is that I want all of these base colours to be the darkest tone and then I'm going to build up in highlights. So it's going to look a little weird to begin with but you'll see as it comes together. And I'm working my way down to the boots with that neutral grey. Looking at some reference photos, it looks like his shoes are actually a different colour, so I'm going to be using Morgas Bone here and just doing these shoes that are poking out from the leg warmers. I'm using some neutral grey on the details on his knee here and then switching over to a coal black and using that for the strap.
There's some other details that use that black as well, for example his helmet strap and the straps around the chest piece. So with most of the base coats done, now it's time to start highlighting. So here's some Wild Rider Red, and I'm just applying this to the jumpsuit. I'm trying to catch those folds in the fabric. Luckily there's a lot of details on this jumpsuit, so I'm just letting the paintbrush fill in. I'm trying to avoid the shadows and the, the deeper areas and leave that to the original orange. But I'm just adding some highlights here to the pockets and some of the folds in the fabric. For some of the more fine areas, I'm just letting the brush catch the sculpt as I drag it across. And here's some Troll Slayer Orange, and I'm applying this to a slightly smaller area of those original highlights, but making sure to still get the majority. This is my mid-tone, so I want to make sure that most of this model is this Troll Slayer Orange. I've mixed in a little bit of white to get a kind of a light orange here and I'm just using that for my highest highlights. I don't want to go much brighter than this because I don't want it to appear shiny. So this is my brightest tone now and I'm just catching the very small areas of the fabric. I'm also choosing where I highlight as well. So where I would think the sun would normally hit his fabric. So for example, the folds under his legs aren't getting this highest highlight. Here I'm using a bold titanium white, and I'm mixing this in with the neutral gray to make kind of an ash gray color. And I'm starting to apply those same techniques to the straps here. So I'm starting off with a mid-tone, and then I'll build up to a white highlight. I'm also applying this to the vest as well. With my highest tone being white, I'm just applying this to the majority of the vest, but leaving some areas still in that dark grey. And then I'm doing the same again on the leg straps. This was kind of a harsh highlight, so I did go back and blend those two colors with a mix between the gray and the white. I'm also adding a few highlights to the hose on the chest piece as well. And a light gray along the top. Now I'm using a fan favorite here, this is Deck Tan, and I'm applying this as a highlight to the gloves. And then I ended up mixing up the Deck Tan with the original base color, the Bane Blade, and I'm using that as my first highlight, and then a Deck Tan highlight on top of that. I liked this transition more, it wasn't as harsh, so I did actually end up going back onto the gloves and blending in that mid-tone. These highlights might seem a little drastic, but once the markings are on this helmet, they'll blend in nicely. For the shoes, I felt that they were just a little bit too bright, so I used some Bane Blade mixed in with the Morgas Bone and dimmed them down a little, so I'm almost painting in reverse here, and painting in the shadows. And for the leg warmers, I mixed in a dark grey and applied that as a shadow as well. I wanted the top of the miniature to be brighter overall than the bottom of the miniature, as I wanted to 
kind of capture some sunlight, so I made sure that these highlights weren't as bright as the ones I was going along the top of the mini. So this is an off-white, this is just an ash grey that I already had mixed up, and I'm using that for the straps on his boots. And then using that same colour, I'm just adding a few of these rivets and details on his belt here. And just a quick highlight on his chin strap. I'm prepping the lightsaber with just a complete white undercoat here. And we're starting with Kalidor Sky, and I'm just adding a few more details to the chest. I'm also going back and forth, checking my reference and making sure I'm getting all of the right colors on the right places here. For the face, I'm carefully dotting the whites of the eyes with an off-white, and I'm not too worried about overspill because I can clean it up with that original Bugman's Glow flesh tone. And then a very, very small pupil in black. It's okay if these are a little off, you can always go back and change them at this stage, so just push and pull the paint until you're happy with the eyes. For the majority of the flesh tones, I'm going to be using pink flesh. And I'm just applying this the same way I did on the jumpsuit. This is my mid-tone, so I'm making sure most of the face is this pink flesh color. And I'm leaving the Bugman's Glow in the recesses. I've mixed a little deck tan in with the pink flesh, and I'm using that for just a couple quick highlights here. And I'm just dabbing on some highlights, I'm not covering that original pink flesh. And now this is pure deck tan for the brightest points on his face, so his nose and the top of his cheeks. I've mixed a little of that uh, Evil Sun Scarlet in with the pink flesh, and I'm using that for the lips here. For the lightsaber, we're going to be using Sky Blue and I've mixed it in with some white and I'm applying this to most of the lightsaber but I'm leaving just a little bit of white down at the bottom there. This is pure sky blue and I'm applying this to about 50% of the saber blade upwards. I'm going back in with the white and just reinforcing that initial glow from the base. There's a ton of different ways you can handle the lightsaber. This is kind of like my preferred method that I've done on other miniatures, so I'm just going to keep this consistent. And because this miniature will be viewed from the front, I'm just adding a hint of white just along the edge of the blade here. I wanted to experiment with a object source lighting glow. Blue is quite hard to capture on sun tones, but it works really well on these ivory and warm colors. So this is just some of that initial light blue that I put on the saber that I'm just gently applying to the jumpsuit and the edge of the helmet. I'm going to be using a towel light ochre here for the lenses on his helmet. And then a Uriel yellow for the majority of the color here. And a very small white highlight for some reflected light. For some of the markings on the helmet, I'm going to be using that Uriel yellow. 
Because this miniature is quite small, I'm going to be interpreting some of these markings. They won't be 100% accurate, but you'll be able to get the, the idea across just with some very small paint here. Again, I'm just using some reference online, and then I'm going back in with that initial thick tan and tidying up any details that overspill. I'm also using some black for some of these stripe marks on the front here. So for the rebel symbols, I am going to cheat a little bit. I have these decals that I haven't used yet. I ordered them off of Etsy. And I'm just placing these on as I normally do my decals. You can paint this symbol quite easily if you do a red dot and then two tan dots either side to make that rebel symbol. For the base, I didn't quite just want that white. So I'm using a very watery sky blue here and just applying it so it sinks into the recesses. And for the crashed snow speeder that he's standing on, I'm using that original Bane Blade. I'm applying this quite loosely, and then I'll go back in and tidy this up with some of the white in a minute. I watered down just a little bit of black to make to help this sink into the recesses. Again, still trying not to use a wash here. <laughs> um, and then I'm pin washing some of these creases in the snow speeder. And then I'm just doing some quick and sketchy highlights on the engine here. Exactly the same method as I did on the gloves and the helmet. I'm finishing out the snow with a white highlight. And this is just very loosely dry brushing over the top of the sculpt. And then I'll go back in and just tidy up some of those areas. And then this is a black rim for the base. And there you have it, Luke Skywalker ready for the Battle of Hoth. This is a great looking miniature, a great sculpt. It was a pleasure to paint something that was limited edition. It's been kind of sat on my shelf for a while and I've, I've been a little scared to tackle it, but I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Just taking that extra time makes a lot of difference. I do still love using contrast paints and washes, but it was nice to challenge myself on this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I really appreciate all your feedback. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking the video and subscribing for more content. I release a new video every week. Hopefully you guys find this informative and thank you again for all your recent love and support. I will see you all in the next one.